A lot of things happening right now with Russia's invasion of Ukraine. This morning, the leaders of the world's wealthiest democracies agreed to impose further sanctions against Russia. They also pledged more financial support for Ukraine ahead of the Group of Seven, the G7 summit in Hiroshima, Japan, this weekend. This comes as officials say Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky will attend the summit in person on Sunday. And by the way, this will be the furthest he has traveled from Kyiv since the war began more than a year ago. The Pentagon is also reporting an accounting error on weapons sent to Ukraine. According to the Pentagon, ammunition, missiles, some other equipment sent to Ukraine were overvalued by around $3 billion. Again, they say that was an accounting error, an expensive one. Uh, here to talk more about all of these issues, Major General William Inyard, as always, thanks for being here. I want to start on the battlefield uh, because there's some interesting news this morning uh, that caught my attention. We are getting reports that Russian troops, these are regular forces, are abandoning the flanks in some cities, including Bakhmut, one of the bloodiest battle points. The head of the Wagner Group speaking out, he's appealing essentially to the Russian Ministry of Defense. Your read on this development right now? Well, good morning, Marnie. You know, um, thus far, we've not seen any great breakthroughs uh, by either side. Uh, we have seen some incremental changes, uh, and certainly uh, it is a, a change in, in uh, positions with the Ukrainians now on the advance and the, and the Russians retreating. Um, Prigozhin's uh, statements, his video ranting and raving about the Russian forces uh, pulling back um, and, and the failure to, to receive ammunition, uh, the question is, how much of that is a smokescreen in an attempt to uh, deceive uh, Ukraine and Ukraine supporters, and how much of it is true? Uh, that, that remains to be seen. But it is clear that Ukrainian forces have been able to retake some territory. Uh, and interestingly, Russia is finding it necessary to send in airborne forces to reinforce their regular army forces in those areas. And that really causes two problems for Putin. First is that the military maxim is you don't reinforce failure, you support success. Uh, secondly, by using airborne forces uh, to reinforce infantry troops, and what both sides have been calling a meat grinder battle is a real misuse of uh, airborne infantry. Uh, airborne troops are typically lightly equipped and not designed to fight in the virtually static trench warfare that we've seen develop around Bakhmut. The other thing that we're starting to see, General, is um, what's being described as a mousetrap, that Ukrainian forces are, are essentially pulling Russian forces into a place like Bakhmut. Is that momentum gaining? Is this the Ukrainian offensive, counteroffensive starting to take shape? That's hard to say at this point, but certainly they're tying down a lot of Russian troops there. Uh, Bakhmut is not going to decide the war. Uh, uh, and if the Ukrainians uh, do surround the, the Wagner group and, and take uh, a lot of them uh, captive, uh, it, it, uh, while it will have a, a good impact for them, it's not going to change the course of the war. What they really have to do is split the Russian supply lines that go down into Crimea uh, in order to retake Crimea. And uh, you have to remember that Bakhmut uh, lies next to, the, to Russia, the Russian border, uh, and so they can easily directly supply that. Crimea, on the other hand, is much more difficult to supply and uh, in the long term, much more important to Russia. I want to talk about the G7. There's a lot happening over the next few days there on the diplomatic front. Discussions about Russia's invasion of Ukraine will be taking place. What do you expect to come from these talks now that we're also hearing Volodymyr Zelensky will be there in terms of putting more pressure on Putin? Well, I, I am sure that the G7 is going to continue to support Ukraine. Uh, there will be uh, more economic and more military aid provided to the Ukrainians. Uh, Zelensky has done just a terrific job as, as an international statesman. He's been a, a real Churchill figure for the Ukrainians. And uh, it's interesting. This is the furthest that he's traveled from Ukraine since the invasion. Uh, and it shows that he's got a lot of confidence in his military uh, and in his people to continue to stand up to the Russians. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.